before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. We are here for part two with two of my girlfriends talking about the weird stuff, the giants and the Bigfoot. Jessica and Shanti, how are you ladies doing today? Excellent. Yes. Thank you. Great. Great. Happy Easter. It's Easter Friday. <laughs> what an interesting topic for Good Friday, right? Absolutely. Okay. It's always a good thing to talk about giants. But you guys, I want to go ahead, before we get into the episode, I want to go ahead. If, I know most of you are already subscribed to both Shanti and Jessica. But if you are not subscribed to these beautiful, beautiful ladies, go ahead and get subscribed. Jessica was telling me before Shanti came on that she had a really interesting show last night about the Alaskan Triangle. So um, I won't say much more, but uh, Jessica, do you? Uh, it, it was a very good show, wasn't it? We should have our audience should go watch it, shouldn't they? Yeah, it was excellent. I had remote viewed the little people out of Alaska. And, uh, and so I'd already talked about the Alaska Triangle and all the enigmas within that triangle for a while, uh, from the Kustika to the Black Pyramid to missing people. And uh, I had a fantastic guest on last night. I had Lance Hightower from Monster 911. And, uh, and he's been to Alaska, knows a whole lot about it. And boy, we had a great show. So please go check that out. The Cryptid Hunters on YouTube. Thank I'll you. Link, I'll be linking that down below. And Shanti, of course, you guys know Shanti has two channels. She has, of course, Aquarius, Ri Aquarius Rising Africa 2, which is the second channel because the first one, you know, <laughs> the first one got sent to the next event, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, but, um, and, and Jessica's going to be, you're going to be next week, you're going to be coming on. To yes, Monday, right? yes, and absolutely. In the, in the mo so, so you guys, I was laughing with Shanti. So Mondays, I'm, I'm usually on with Shanti and we do our, our deep dive into to delusional dead people, dead pe people, we gossip. That's, that's Jessica, I always say my favorite subject <laughs> is history because all history is really is just gossiping. That's all it is. It's just gossiping. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. That's it's like academic gossiping. That's what it is. So um, yeah. I will not be here this Monday, though, because of the holiday. But typically on Mondays, we're going to the Romanoffs right now. I think we want to do Spartacus. We want to go into the Borgias eventually. The Borgias, the uh, the Jesus painting that everybody hangs in their churches and their houses. That's, that's the right Borgia, y'all. So um, we want to do that. There's so many deep dives we have for, for, for our Monday shows on Aquarius Rising Africa. And also, guys, on Wednesdays, we have been d diving into delusional alive people on Wednesdays on Solutions with Shanti. We just um, oh. wrapped up the, for now, wrapped up. We'll see what happens in the future with this ongoing case, the uh, Jody Hildebrandt and the Ruby Frankie case. And I think this Wednesday, we're going to be looking at Lori Vallow Daybell and those, <coughs> that case that happened a few years ago. They're very similar. <laughs> Um, so make sure that you're subscribed to all three of those channels. Obviously, if you can't catch the live shows, you can always go and watch the replay. That's And, and I think everybody's backed up on Rumble as well. So make sure you've got our backup channels. Yeah. Too. And just some housekeeping, because Jessica and I were chatting about this before we get started, guys. When you are watching a YouTube channel and there's more than one person on the screen, you might see the host, which would be myself today, or one of the guests looking off doing something while the conversation is going. Just want you guys to be aware that those of us on screen know what that person is doing. They're either keeping up with the chat, 
if, if it's a live show, they're watching the chat and they're keeping up with the conversation happening to be able to address questions that are coming up and, or they are looking to pull up pictures for the guests they have coming on. And so for those of us, like whenever I'm on somebody else's channel and I see that they're doing something, I'm, I, I know exactly what they're doing, right? They're running the show. So um, I know Jessica and I, we spoke about that. So just so you guys understand, no one's being rude. No one's, it's literally the, the <laughs> running of the show that's going on and, and everybody on screen is aware of that. Is there anything you guys wanna add to that before we start our show today? Oh man, I'm so glad you addressed that because yeah, that's one thing. We're, we're back here like working, I'm working off of a phone and a laptop and I'm, I'm addressing, you know, comments in the sections and I've got channel members and I wanna pull their comments up. And yeah, sometimes it could look like we're not paying attention, but we're completely paying attention okay, yeah. to, to everything that's going on. And so, yeah, so it's okay to have constructive criticism, but, you know, we, we take that with a grain of salt as a yeah. show host. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We, and we, we're, we're filming out of our homes, guys. Like if you're, if you're on a, like a professional set, you're going to have like stage hands and, and producers and people to, to do that. But it's going to be all slick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're doing everything and then i'll give you a little heads up too guys most of the time like if i'm coming on shanti's channel or whatever the people already know that the host already knows what what you're going to talk about and has probably already looked at the case themselves so they're not they're aware of where the guest is going in in the material so so they they can't so they can pay attention to the comments and listen to the to the guests at the same time. So we appreciate you guys being uh, concerned about manners, but just know that there's a lot going on. I've got my cell phone right here too. I've got, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on at the same time when a show is going on. So just bear with us because we're just, we're just three ladies. We're just three, we're just three <laughs> ladies just, just making trouble. That's all we're doing. Winging it. <laughs> Winging it. Winging it as, exactly. we go, as we go on. So, but we have a really, really kind of, well, fun for us because it's modern times, not fun from the people of the 1800s. We're going to be talking about an incident in this part two that happened, like historically happened in the Okefenokee Swamp in Georgia. And the Okefenokee Swamp, for those who do not know where that is, and I will put pictures in at the editing process, but it is a swamp that is on the border of Florida and Georgia on the East Coast. Now, I kind of want to tell you guys that that, I have to be careful about how I say this because I had done a deep dive into Jekyll Island a very long time ago. And for those who do not know what Jekyll Island is, it is an island off of the coast of Georgia. We have a lot of barrier islands. And um, it's very famous for a book called The Creature of, is it called The Creature of Jekyll Island? Is that what that book is called? And this is where the Federal Reserve was created. So this island was a private island, what, in the early 1900s, late 1800s, owned by the powers that be, where they'd get on their boats and come down south for the winter, like a bird, they'd fly south for the winter to get out of the, out of the snow and to better climate. And they created, um, and this is where they did their shenanigans, we'll say, and there's a lot of ghost stories on this island and a lot of um, weird juju on this island even to this day this, this island is open to the public to this day there are beaches there there are resorts there now um but there is a history to this island even before before when the, when if we're looking at the official narrative the official timeline a historical timeline that they give us when the east coast of the united states was being settled there is a story about French Huguenots. So a lot of the French people went to the New Orleans area, but the ones who were <coughs> Protestants came to the East Coast. My French lineage from Charleston is the Bryces, the Brices, they're Huguenots. So a lot of Huguenots came to the South Eastern uh, board of the United States. This is before Georgia was a, a penal colony, or guys, this is like in the beginning days. And when they landed on the barrier islands, the French people, there are journal entries about how they ran very quickly in the middle of the night because these giants that were like Native American giants were doing rituals involving eating human babies. And I'm trying to be careful how I say that. And so they ran to um, St. Augustine, the area, which is below the Okefenokee Swamp, which is one of the oldest um, towns in the United States. It's Spanish. It was a Spanish-owned area. So this, to kind of, not to make light of everything, but this idea of giants in the Georgia on the Georgia coastline um, isn't, isn't 
just one story. There are multiple, multiple, multiple stories regarding giants living in this area, this marshy swampland that we call it the low country because it literally drops. It's low. It's where we have, they had a lot of rice plantations that were low there. So anything else you want to say about the Okefenokee Swamp in general, Jessica, before we get on with the story? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I've, I've done my research on the Okefenokee as well, and I was tasked the Okefenokee attack of the giant in 1829 as a remote viewing target a while back. And, uh, and I, I did a show on it, and I, I happened to be friends with a lady I met at a Bigfoot festival down in Elkins, Elkins Creek, you know, Georgia. It's actually in <clears throat> Molina, Georgia, but we're, we, I do a Bigfoot festival down there with them uh, for, the, for the past two years. Well, she, she saw the show that I did and she, she contacted me and she said, Hey, I'm actually from the Okefenokee swamp. I think her photographer, her, her company is called the swamp hag. Okay. Oh, so she's, she's a, she's a true swamp lady. She loves it. Okay. And, um, and so she, she told me that it is well known by everyone that lives down there in that area, or at least her people, she said, uh, that a race of giants live deep within the swamp. And we're not talking about necessarily bigfoot we're talking about actual giant humans would live down there yeah um, and so so there there it is well known that giants did live in this in the okefenokee swamp some say on an island in the swamp wow this is also where the alligator the american alligator originates from and like here here's this map guys you can kind of see this is kind of the swamp land this is the coastal area and what's interesting jessica we, we saw this at the bigfoot festival okefenokee swamp feeds into the Suwannee River, which feeds into a lot of the um, the springs in Florida, like Itchnatuckney, where, where there are a lot of Bigfoot sightings as well. Um, and so that's a huge connection, because here's the, the, the state line, you guys. So this would be Florida right here. And this would kind of be where a lot of the, the springs are. And then this is the Okefenokee Swamp. And then up here is the coastline where we have a lot of the barrier islands. So I just, now it, it means what? Okefenokee is a Creek Indian um, word that means, shake, it's, it's like shaking shaking marsh or something. I, I'm not sure if you know the full, I have it pulled up here somewhere, the full translation of what Okefenokee actually means. Um, let's see here. It means, it means shaking water. That's what it means. Okefenokee means shaking water. Well, why would a water shake? That's my question. Because you think the bayou, the swamp is just being very, very swampy, just like very like still and mucky and sweaty and just kind of critter. Just kind of, well, just, you just gave, me the, gave me the creepy creeps there because usually it's the water's quiet on the top, right? Yeah. And there's lots of activity underneath. So if that water's shaking, you got to know there's plenty of activity down there. Eek. Oh, yeah. Probably earthquakes or some kind of tectonic plates or something that are moving right there. Now, I mean, just just below that south is not too far from there is like the Wakulla Springs that you and I talk about in that area. And there's little like volcanoes and stuff. I don't know if that's what they call them exactly, but it's some kind of like smoke volcanoes or something around there. A lot of interesting things going on with the geology of the areas. In yeah, that and down I, here. So you guys, just to be clear, like Bayou, when you want, you may, I, I reference Bayou a lot too, because I know a lot of people are very familiar with like New Orleans and their bayous down there and how creepy that is. A bayou is a swamp. It's the same thing. So that's why I, just to get our audience who are not from the United States that in their head, like what we're talking about with the Oki, it's that whole region is very swampy. And you got the span. So I love Spanish moss. Do you, Shanti, do you know what Spanish moss is? Our, our, no, what's that? Spanish moss, uh, it's like this, it's, I, I call it drapery for trees. It's, it's only found in like the deep south. Uh, Jess, I'll, I'll look some pictures of Jessica. Do you, do you have a better explanation for what Spanish moss actually looks like? It looks like gray pasta, curly pasta in the trees. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. It's like a wig. Wow. It's a, a tree wig. I don't know. There is it's nothing fun. more southern to me than <laughs> Spanish moss. And wow. It, like where my all through like that that's is Spanish moss, and so you, I, I, it's like right. it's like tree drapery. <laughs> it's like curtains for trees. Wow. Okay. Um, Looks quite pretty, actually. It is pretty, but when you're in the marshland, when you're in the swamps and the are the bayou, and you've got the Spanish Spanish moss also hanging over that, it can. Yeah. Like I said, this is where notoriously people have dumped a lot of bodies because they can. Yeah. You know, it's a very um. 
It's very hot. It's very humid, which again, leads humid, to, yeah. yeah. So anyway, Jessica, take it away, girl. Now that we got, we, we, we've set the scene, we, we've set the stage for this area. <laughs> oh yeah. Exactly. Okay, well, I guess, I guess we can get into the Okefenokee attack the, of the giant in 1829. Okay. So to give, give a little more background of the Okefenokee. Okay. Around there, there had been stories written about a race of giants back in 1806. Okay. So this attack of the giants that happened in 1829 was not the first um, account of a giant being down in or giants being around the swamp. Let me see. Let me pull up my notes. Uh, because in 1806, there was actually a, a piece of literature that was written uh, by Jedediah Morris called Geography Made Easy. And on his section in about Georgia, he talked about a legend that a group of Indian hunters, is the quote, uh, had gone into the swamp and become lost. When they were in desperate condition, they found beautiful women. They had they had the, the most beautiful women they had ever seen that came to their rescue when they were lost. Uh, they said the, the women were warning the men to leave, to try to get out of there as soon as they could because their husbands were fierce men and cruel to strangers. They were, uh, they were said by the Creek Indians to be of gigantic stature and both cruel and warlike. So these were giants in the swamp. That's at the Okefenokee down there in south georgia the woman sorry was the woman giantesses or was it yes. just the males so the women were yeah, also the, like the women, were, the women were also large yes they were also bigger than the men for sure but the men i, I don't know if the men were even bigger but they said that the to get out of there because their husbands would hurt them they would unalive them they were giants warlike and very dangerous uh, so there was an account in that book about that and it was but it was a native american legend yeah. But if if I've learned anything from all these shows that I do and all the research that I've done, a lot of these legends, there's truth in them. Okay. Totally. They don't just come out of thin air. So, wow. so in the, the winter of 1828. Now, if we, we want to go back to the history of the Okefenokee, um, around 1805 is when the, the earliest kind of settlers, like the white settlers came in around the Okefenokee, 1805. They moved into the areas east, north, and west of the swamp after a land lottery of 1820. Okay, so in 1820, the settlers started moving in, and uh, and they were raising hogs. They were living kind of like the pioneer lifestyle down there, uh, and they were making log cabins. They were growing corn uh, in patches of gardens. Sometimes they would get around i guess between the 1820s and the 1850s they started moving onto the little islands of the swamp there's like islands around the swamp apparently okay well around 1829 there were two men i think it was a son and a father from what i can what i recall from the story uh, but they were living on the edge of the swamp and they decided that it was really dry and they wanted to go into the swamp to see if they could find some wildlife uh, to see what's kind of out there. They wanted to explore. Um, they said that they went, they packed up some food and their rations for about a week or two. They were planning to be in there for a while. And they were, they were planning to be in there for like two weeks. And when they got into the heart of the swamp, okay, they had been there for a while. I think they'd been in there for about a week. When they got to the heart of the swamp, they found a footprint. It looked like a human footprint that was, I'm going to quote this. Okay, the length of the foot was 18 and the breadth nine. So that's 18 inches long and nine inches wide. Okay, that's a wide foot. The monster from every appearance must have moved forward in an easy or hesitating gait, his stride from heel to toe being a trifle over six feet. So that's a, a, a stride, you know, when I, I'm a tracker. Okay, so uh, when we're out there looking for Bigfoot tracks, we're looking to see where does this footprint end and where does the next one start? You know, like, what is the stride? Because that's just going to tell you, help you figure out how big that animal is out there or that person or the Sasquatch. Okay. Um, but this was, this was out of the Milledgeville, Georgia statesman of January of 1829. Um, this is, this was actually documented in the newspapers at the time down there. Uh, they said that the men in, in the newspaper, the article said the men had seen enough ending their expedition and retreating out of the swamp. Uh, they related to their friends and neighbors what they had seen. Well, of course, 
the rowdy Floridians heard about it. <laughs> okay, the guys down in Florida, they they got love a the Floridians. We love them. <laughs> <laughs> so they they had a, a group of of gentlemen who were um, hunters. They were I think they were a little rowdy because I did remote view this and I was picking up on data about there being like <laughs> they were just rowdy. You know, they were they were coming up here to try to find out they'd heard about it and they wanted to see what made that big footprint. They were going to hunt it down. And they were they were ready to party, man. They were they were like, okay, take us to where you found this footprint to find this mysterious giant. And uh, and I'm I'm gonna quote I'm gonna quote this newspaper article one more time. Following for some days the direction of their guide, they came at length upon the first track discovered. So the, the footprint was still there. Pursuing these traces several days longer, they came to a halt on a little on a little eminence and determined to pitch their camp and refresh themselves for the day. Um now, this is when the good stuff happened. It actually is horrible because these men were attacked. Okay. Um, it says, this is quoted in the newspaper. Um, As the hunters were discharging their guns to reload them with fresh powder for the night, a wild animal charged at the camp. The next minute, he was full in their view, advancing upon them with a terrible look and ferocious mane. Our little band instinctively gathered close in a body and presented the rifles. The huge being, nothing daunted, bounded upon its victims and in the same instant received the contents of seven rifles. The fight, however, did not end there. He did not fall alone, nor did he, until, nor until he had glutted his wrath with the death of five of them, which he effected by wringing the head from the body. Writhing and exhausted, at length he fell and with his hapless prey beneath his grasp. Okay, so whatever this is now in the, in this article that I'm <clears throat> quoting on, they are suggesting that this was a Bigfoot that attacked these people. Okay, so so the story has been passed down as though this was a Bigfoot, a Sasquatch that had attacked these wow. men. Now there were seven men total. Five of the men were unalived. Their heads were ripped off. Okay, but not until. The creature had been shot by all seven of them, and it ended up passing away as well. But two of the men survived and lived to tell about it. And so that's how the story got out about what happened to those men. Um, but wow. is the, the creature laid on the ground dying, writhing and sometimes roaring. The men who survived the attack gathered around it to make a closer inspection. The creature was found to measure 13 feet from head to toe and his breadth and volume of just proportions. Um, they were scared that this creature was going to cry out to its mother. They said to its mother. Uh, and so they ended up just looking at it, inspecting it, and then taking off and going straight back home. You know, they were trying to get out of there because they figured that they were going to be ambushed and probably die as well. Uh, but that, Why that its was, mother? Why its mother? Did, 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 was it young? That's, that's a good question. They, they, that's what they were saying, that they were worried that it was going to be calling its mother. But, you know, then again, it's when, when you hear about Civil War soldiers that were on the battlefield or even on any battle, even in modern day war, when you're dying, you call out for your mom, right? A lot so of people. True. Yeah. So maybe so that's kind of what they were thinking. I actually but, uh, pulled but, up, I pulled up a newspaper article, Giant Storage, 1829. There's a ton of them, guys. There's a ton of them. Of old, I'll put some in in in, um, in the editing process, you guys. But yeah, and this, I, I don't think it was a big, but I think it was a giant human because of what the French um, settlers many centuries before had experienced and their terror at what they experienced, and they ran quickly ran to the Spanish um, the Spanish territory because they were terrified of what they were seeing. Now, the interesting thing about Georgia too, when we look at the eighteen hundreds, especially pre, because we're, we're coming. We're post American Revolution at this time, as 1776, 1790 was around the time that we were kind of fledgling as a new country. So this isn't much later than that. And this is the one thing we have in common with Australia, because Georgia was a penal colony. So out of all the colonies of the 13 colonies, Georgia was where England dropped its prisoners off. So and once we want we won our independent. Where do the prisoners go after that? Australia, right? So for our Australians watching, you just were a few years shy of being an American. So, you know, um, when they pushed you on a boat, made you go somewhere else. So a lot of, 
you know, and it's and Georgia is an interesting state too, Jessica, because the, the northern part of Georgia is Appalachian Mountains. The southern part of Georgia is swampland. Oh yeah, we're very diverse here in our geography. <laughs> and our folklore, wow. our folklore, because we got crazy folklore from the Appalachian Mountains. So, Jessica, do you think that this is a giant or a Bigfoot? What's your opinion on this? I say giant. I say giant 100%. Uh, and I, I am a cryptid researcher. I do talk about Bigfoot. I do go and study and research Bigfoot out in the field. I think this was a giant. And and I'm going to say that because I did remote view it. I do feel like it was more like of a human stature. Um, and the fact that we have the story that was published in 1806 about the, the men, the two men who had encountered the women that were giants and said that their husbands were going to hurt them. They were They were giant humans. And the women were actually speaking in a language that they could understand as well. So um, Bigfoots are not known to speak English and stuff. Not that they were speaking English. I don't know what they were speaking. But um, And I have a feeling if it was... They're a, more animalistic, aren't they, the Bigfoots? Yeah, they're, they well, would, and they're, I was about to say, they would have written that they would have fur or something or... You know. You, you would have... Yeah. You, well, they said the beast. Okay, so I think that's where the Bigfoot comes in and it's so large. I mean, it could have been a wild man. Okay. So we also have wild men reports and there's a very famous wild man in that it's not too far from there down in Chattahoochee, Florida, that is documented in the newspapers as well. It's called the Ochizi pond wild man. And that was uh, a, a wild man and by a wild man. I mean, it looks human covered in hair, but, but human like and um, naked. Okay, usually they're naked, running around, and, uh, and there's one found in the, the Ochizi Pond, and it was captured, uh, taken to the capital at, at Tallahassee, to the governor's mansion, or to the capital, and the governor said, I don't want to have anything to do with that, and he sent it to the Chattahoochee Hospital, and uh, and it's well documented, uh, this wild man, he, he eventually was buried on the the premises of the Chattahoochee Hospital wow. up there. And I, I've done Bigfoot research in Chattahoochee, Florida before. Now, what is a so, wild man specifically for our audience? What's the okay. difference between a wild man and a Bigfoot? Okay, a wild man. Okay, a wild man, I would consider like a type four Sasquatch. Okay, it's more human. So it's almost like a Neanderthal human. Uh, right. But it's, some people say like, I believe M.K. Davis, who is a very amazing researcher when it comes to Bigfoot, um, they talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, they talk about it, it being like a mix between a, a Sasquatch and a human woman, like a Sasquatch man and a human woman, basically. So it's got like human DNA and Sasquatch DNA. We don't, of, of course. A bit of a hybrid. It's a hybrid. Yeah, kind of. Uh, or, or it could just be its own thing. It could just be like a Neanderthal human too, but they're feral. Okay. So we talk about feral humans. It's kind of a feral human in a way, but, a, but it's a little squatchy. They're feral. They're dangerous. They're going to react like a wild yeah. animal. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, it could wow. it could have been a it could have been a a wild man type of a situation, but I don't know if they're super huge, like thirteen feet tall. I haven't really heard of a thirteen foot tall wild man before. So, what was the was the entity clothed? Do they mention it being clothed like we are, or was it naked? That's a good question. I don't know. It may have been in my data though. Let me look. As you know, I was actually a very good question because I must say of all the stories that I've heard about the giants and things, I've never asked what clothes were they wearing. I think I'll start asking those questions I'm from now on. I'm assuming they're clothes, but that might be a, you know, I mean, they're obviously their tribes in Africa that the women don't wear tops. You know, that might be just something of my, our Western cultural perspective of what's appropriate. And if we think of a, giant we're thinking of a human just bigger than us right yeah so um, well, well, the giant sightings that i have researched and looked into they are the giant humans are wearing clothing just like the giant of kandahar uh there's uh stories of the giant of kandahar in afghanistan uh that you can find this online you know a lot of people talk about it i did a i've done talked about i've, I've talked about it on several shows i did remote view that as a blind target and I had people who contacted me after that show who were family, family members of some of the people who were in the troop, in that unit, the military unit that uh, either got attacked or went to recover the body of that giant. Um, and so for people who aren't familiar with that story, uh, there was, it, it's pretty well known, but there was a, a unit 
of, I'm going to say special forces soldiers, because when I looked into this, this is my take on this was my remote viewing data. And so I was seeing that there was um, there, a unit of U.S. soldiers or some, some type of soldiers that had gone into on a mission to Afghanistan to a, a cave. I think they were sent there for uh, to attain a sample of a giant, which means to uh, eradicate, you know, to to exterminate a giant and and take it out of there for cloning and DNA sample purposes. But that that was right. in the data, okay. Um, but but they got there and the there was a, at least a giant, maybe two giants that were laying in wait. They were expecting. It was almost like they were expecting this troop, and they got ambushed, and all of them were perished, and the giants ate them. Okay, like tore them to shreds, ate them. Well, yeah. when they didn't make their checkpoint, uh, another another special ops group was sent in to go find out where they were, why they didn't show up. And when they got to the mountain where they were had last been heard from, uh, there was equipment strewn about. There were bones. There were body parts. And um, I think one of them yeah. actually got speared by a giant and they ended up yeah. taking it out. I think they shot it. And and I've been told that the soldiers are actually trained to shoot above the heads. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that is, that is not because they're wanting to miss this because they're being trained to shoot at giants over there. Yeah. Brings a whole yeah. other perspective to be five foe fum. Mm -hmm. I uh, absolutely. You know, where I was going to say, where come from. Fee yeah. fi fo fum ain't no fairy tale, that's for sure. Oh, I, I mean, hearing I about these things, yeah. And I've heard these, the self same story as well. And I mean, apparently what I'm hearing um, about the giants and stuff in that area, um, they obviously live in the ca caves, but they get appeased with human sacrifice. So they literally, girls, women are nothing there. So girl babies or young girls are fed to them um, as their food and basically to appease them. And there's more than one. I mean, there's a couple. Um, and definitely then um, they, apparently the smell is really, really bad. They smell really, really bad. That it's like almost like... The swamp smells bad. We have a, we have a saying here. So like I'm a sulfur smell. smell. Apparently I'm hearing it's like a very strong sulfuric sulfur smell. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Well, they're these, cannibals. I mean, these things. Mm. They're, they're cannibals. So they're going to be, and, and when I, when I'm picking up on data that's like cannibals, to me, that would suggest that they have human DNA. I was about okay, to say, what's your genetic makeup if, if eating us is considered you know, cannibalism. Like cannibalism, if it's the same species. So obviously we're the same species. We're just yeah. tiny compared to compared to these these folks. Now, another question I have: Are these beings, these humanoid beings, these giants, are they interdimensional, or are they only in our? Yes. Just don't see them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they probably. Up. I I would assume that they they know how to utilize Earth's natural portals. Yeah. Okay, just absolutely. like the cryptids do. So, if that's interdimensional, then yes. Yeah. yeah. Cause I'm thinking this is where my mind goes. I always laugh about cleaning up my dog's poop because I say he's got man poops. Could you, could you imagine? Could you imagine? Yeah. Oh, it smells so bad. It would be a size of a mouth. Can you imagine running around naked? <laughs> Who is the one with the weed and the jar, the pickle jar? The rats mutant, the rats mutant. <laughs> I'm sorry, I could not, not go there. So wait till I, I ended 2023 with the Rasputin cult because these, his wiener's now in a jar. In, <laughs> in a pickle jar. It's so gross. It's so, listen, listen, wieners serve a purpose, but they're not the most attractive part of a man's anatomy. Let's just be, be honest. Oh my gosh. Serve a purpose. Oh my gosh. But, I guess someone had to, they're worshiping the holy lingam there, right? Holy so lingam. I don't know. Right? See, that, that's dick pic for that generation is just stick it in a jar, right? Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, the lingam is true. It's yeah. true, right? Wow. I couldn't, and I was thinking with the female giants, like, like I can't imagine, like, what is their stream like when on their period? Like, where does that go? You know, if they've got the same anatomy that we have, where does their, 
where does their lining go? Um, I'm trying not to be too graphic, but for the girls, you know, like when you're on your cycle, like it's, you, you just pee it out and there you flush it. Like, where does theirs go? If they're that much bigger than us, then I'm assuming that it would be a lot more. That's why I'm wondering if they're interdimensional. Because yeah, they're like at least three times taller than us, two to three times. No, well, actually, and if, if a man who's six foot standing on top of each other, it'll be, be more like than two. double. Two, six yeah, foot, that. yeah, two. Like 13 so, feet or so. so. Yeah. So well, they, that's another they, foot on average. Wow. That's a tall person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they, they wear clothing, too. So the ones that uh, I have researched, they did wear clothing, but it was like almost caveman-ish, you know, like animal skins yeah. and things like that. So they do wear clothing. I mean, it would be just the equivalent of people living in like Neanderthals almost or cavemen stuff kind of back at um, you know, more recent, but Versace isn't designing, isn't designing this. There, Keep Saatchi. Versace isn't out there. Uh, <laughs> their, their, their Prada doesn't have a line for them. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. No. But that, well, that makes me think too, like, as you're saying that with like wearing clothing, like we know that they've also been like crocodiles in Africa and alligators here in America that are considered giants. Like they, they will yeah. occasionally find, like in Florida, they'll find an alligator that's like five times the size of a big alligator. But they apparently don't die, these things, these, these, the crocodiles and alligators, whatever. They just keep mutating. And growing bigger. Yeah. Like that's the why they're so big. And some of them are literally hundreds of years old. At some point, you'd be like, can I just go? <laughs> can I just <laughs> exactly. Can we just please? Probably has a walking spirit. <laughs> I'm so tired of this shit. Can I just go? Listen, I've been in this world long enough. <laughs> like, yeah, um, exactly. Well, the funny thing wow. is, I, always, I love Florida. Florida, I, my our Floridians watching right now, you guys have turned out to be the MVPs of America. And, uh, you know, growing up, we always kind of made fun of Florida. Like it was, it, you know, all Florida, you know, we've got weird animals in Florida. You, there's a fun game you can do where you type in your birthday. So I type in like February 4th, 1983, Florida man gets arrested. If you type your birthday in and see when you're the, what, what, what story of it, because there's crazy arrest stories in Florida all the time. And, um, you know, they, I, I laugh because I've, I've learned from my boyfriend's father that in Florida, Florida is so fiercely free that on your property if you are on your property and you want to cut your lawn naked you can doesn't matter if the yeah. neighbors are seeing your just dick just swinging about like it doesn't matter if the cops can't do anything you're on your property you can do whatever you want on your property so when you say floridians wanted to come up and find this sucker like i believe it because they are fierce people and they um you know that they won't they won't take a lot of shit right and and they they put up with a lot being in florida there's um I, I, in Florida, if you have a pool in the backyard, you have to have like a fence over your pool, like a big, like almost tent over it. And I was wondering why for a really long time. And we assumed it was like insurance purposes in case a kid gets in your backyard, they won't be able to, 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 to drown. Well, no, I found out, you know what it's for? To keep alligators out. Yep. Probably. To keep alligators out of your pool. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Especially during like storms. So alligators can't get into your, your actual pool. So, um, wow. So Florida. It might take up residence. Yeah, yeah, you don't right. want an alligator hanging out in your backyard every day. I mean, we had a we had a place when I was a kid at a place called Alligator Point. I and, did. Uh, yes. Yeah, Shell yes. Point, Alligator Point. You couldn't take your dogs down there because they would get eaten at night. You'd walk outside on the back porch, and there'd be red eyes all in the yard, and those were alligators yeah. everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. My 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 grandmother's father from Quitman, Georgia. He had a, a house. He was a, a dairy farmer. He had a house in Alligator Point called Cow Palace. That was his like getaway. And um, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, we have a double wide. We had a double wide down here, <laughs> girl. I know. I don't know if it had a name, but yeah, we had one. Cow Palace. Um. So it's it's it's. But you know what? There's this there's this great you know. I don't believe in, in Darwin's evolution. I don't believe, I don't, I don't blow by that for a second. But what I do know, I do believe in his survival of the fittest, that only the fittest survive. We see that in animals. And we look at people from Florida, especially the immigrants in Florida, and they learned how to survive, didn't they? <laughs> they learned how to like flow with the nature of Florida. But, um, but yeah, I I um I wonder if we have any any um people watching right now that live in the area of the Okefenokee Swamp. I'm sure there's still sto stories. Wouldn't you think 
that there are still stories and legends in the Okie Pinoki Swamp. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff going on down there. I mean, I have Bigfoot field researcher friends that, that you know, explore that area. And there's there's definitely Bigfoots down there today. And I'm sure there's probably giants. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Okie Pinoki Swamp is huge. What is it, like 700 miles or something like that? Yeah, 700 square miles. So uh, they say that in... I can't imagine it not being all explored now, though, because now we've got, you know, drones and airplane, whatever. I mean, it's been all these years. OK, it's been a couple hundred years. Uh, so I'm assuming it's pretty much all been explored now. But I mean, there could be spots that haven't been explored all the way. There could be cave systems and underground caverns and stuff where giants could be living. I mean, there could be an entrance to like inner earth in there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that the uh, government? Do you think there is an believe. island with giants in the in the government? Just doesn't put it on the map, or just yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Maybe could be. Yeah. I don't put anything past our GOV, as you like to say. Yeah, our GOV. Yeah, yeah. GOV. GOV. Our GOV. <laughs> GOV. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I um. Yeah, I I have a friend who's down at Okie Pinoki a lot, and what's interesting too, because I a few. About six months ago, was going to do a deep dive into all of the springs of Florida because there's all these like, you know, theories that this that we're, the southeastern United States is actually Egypt and that the springs in Florida, the cold springs, they had they're they're notorious for being healing springs. And I was kind of trying to do some some research and all of those springs, La Wakala, the Itchnatuckney, like all of the Devil's Hole, all those springs come from the Suwannee River, and the Suwannee River comes from the, feeds off of the Okefenokee Swamp. So it's all coming from that same area. So I do think there's definitely like a portal there, or some mystical thing that's happening in that area that's feeding into other folklore and legends that kind of expand out past this swampland. Um, right. It's, it's, and it is huge. It's huge. If you're, if you're driving into Florida from Georgia, you're going to pass signs. I mean, you're going to basically going to be driving the freeway is going to be driving right by it. Um, you know, but it's, and missing people. I mean, people go missing in the swamp all the time and it's not always, I mean, it could just be an animal that took you down. It could have been an alligator that took you down. You know, you don't want to mess with, with the alligators, um, or the crocodiles in Africa. They, they don't, you don't you want to let them be leave them be like if they take if an, if an alligator takes over your pool your pool guess what it's now the alligator's pool <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you ain't gonna be wrestling with that one <laughs> you just got a new roommate you got a new pet now might as well give it a name just go ahead and name it because <laughs> it ain't going anywhere <laughs> go ahead, just go buy some food go buy some food for it because now that's sally the alligator <laughs> that's not your pet <laughs> so um <laughs> And it is true exactly. where, where we are in Florida. We always, whenever we leave our property, um, we we make sure Ravi, our dog, is on a leash because there's alligators lingering everywhere, and they can just jump right out. So you always want to make sure your dog's not getting too close to any marshland, you know, because those things are those suckers are hungry. Yeah, they'll go for humans too. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, they'll pull humans down too. So oh yeah, easily. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but see, but see, Bryce, you and I probably had parents that would let us go to Wakala Springs and swim with the alligators. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember at Wakala Springs? At Wak Wakala Springs, there was that big house where the restaurant was inside, and they had that stuff with the alligator. huge alligator. Yes. Yeah, they had like a taxidermed alligator. It was like 12, 13 feet long or something. It was ridiculous. Or twenty, oh. I don't know. It was huge. But I was a little kid at the time, so it may have been way smaller than I remember it being. But it was a big one. It was a big one. I same. I haven't been to Wakala Springs since I because we would go to we would stop in quit. This is when I was really little. We would stop in Quitman, where my grandmother was from, and see the dairy farm and all that stuff. And then we drive down to Wakala Springs, spend a day at Wakala Springs, and then stop at the then in, in, end at Alligator Point. But yeah, listen, Shanti, if we we got to get Shanti to to America, don't we, Jessica, and go on a road oh, trip. Yeah. Get get a get a oh, yeah. just road trip. We're gonna map it out. Can you imagine? There would be trouble. There'd be pandemonium. America will never be the same again. <laughs> It'll be the new world order of a whole different way. A whole different way. All of a sudden, the giants would come out of hiding just to negotiate with us. And be like, be like, you are talking about creating Versace a Versace line for us. <laughs> okay, what would you guys want? What do you want? Show me. Let's size you up. <laughs> if you can stop eating us, 
Yeah. Just stop it. Just stop it already. Just stop that's that a, nonsense a, right now. That's a tall order. It's a tall order. I know you can make terrible. it synthetic. Synthetic. I'm like, listen, I'm a vegetarian. I know how to how to get protein without meat. So let's work that for you guys. Let's work that for the giant. Could you imagine exactly. could you imagine watching y'all? Imagine watching a giant woman give birth. That would be horrifying. When I was in the eighth grade in our sex ed class, we had to watch the birth of a baby. Like watch the baby. I don't know if you had to do that, Jessica. Yeah. And I think oh, yeah. The point was they were trying to scare us. As to like the reality of what happens when you have intimacy, could yeah. you imagine though watching a giant woman pop a baby out? I don't think the. No, that's quite terrifying. That's quite terrifying, actually. And how big is that baby? Like <laughs> three meters long already. <laughs> Are we the little people? Are we actually the little people? I, I say that all the time. Absolutely, I think we're the little people because. Yeah, when you look at when you look at history, there were so many giants, and and they've they've been eradicated somehow. Yeah. They're all gone now. Where did they go? Where where did they go? Oh. Why are why are they not talked about? Why are they not in our history books? Tartaria, I really Tartarian think Tartarian stuff. It's a bunch of giants. Yeah, I, th I think I think it's post mud flood type thing, and a lot of them uh, went have gone to the more inner dimensions under underground. And I honestly think, you know, when you speak to some of these these special forces guys, um, what uh, it's like, I mean, Caleb talks about going and, and literally in, in when they were going into these places, there's, a, there's insectoids, right, that are the size of small cars, okay? And like, they look like earwigs and they like have got these supersonic weapons and things and they kill. I mean, they shoot to kill. There's this whole thing. He says, just think steampunk, like these different dimensions. Think steampunk, these huge AI mecha things. And I mean, and he, I mean, he's, he's amazing with the knowledge he has in terms of stuff like this. And there, I mean, there we are the little people. And yeah, Earth has kind of been inverted in so many ways. So we are the giants to these teeny tiny little insects. I mean, they've got, he talks about spiders, chimeras that are, that have got a, a leg span of six foot, right? And these things emulate human noise. But I think it's, I think they're chimeras, right? They emulate human cry. So they'll call like a human and then of course they eat humans. So there's, I mean, there's, there's like, it's crazy shit out there. It's crazy shit say, out there. I know that as a Southern person up in Appalachia in the mountains and I'm sure in the swamp too, if you hear a baby crying, don't go towards it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's, that's the thing. It. Yeah, it's, it's, um. They, a lot of them try, because they play on our empathy, right? Who's not going to want to go mm. try to find a baby if you're in the nowhere and you hear a baby crying? They, they play on that. But I, I know in Appalachia, there's tons of stories of, from Appalachia of people saying, if you hear a human cry at night in Appalachian, do not go towards that sound. It's not. Yeah, because then you know, so something is trying to lure you in, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I would, yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure with like the Okie, and, and you're right, with the Okie Pinocchio Swamp, like if you're in this area, you can, it's, it's now what a national, it's a national forestry park, right? So you can go and get tour guides, you can go kayaking, you can do all sorts of stuff. But yeah, but still, I mean, it's, this, it's, this, it's the same, you know, man versus nature. Nature is always going to win. You have to always yeah. have the respect of your place. But yeah, we are, I know my, my, um, let's see, my dad's dad was 6'5". He was, Tennessee, like very mountain, but that's even small compared to these suckers. All yeah, them. absolutely. I mean, double the size. Huge. Double the yeah. size. Double the fun. Double the fun. <laughs> so speak for yourself, man. Speak They're for yourself. I, guys, large. I'm guys. doing you know, double fun there. That's for sure. I'll just be sitting watching. <laughs> <laughs> from the corner. <laughs> double the size, double the fun. Like, listen, those giants, they're going to have to find a giant giant woman because I don't think us <laughs> uh, us human women could handle, I think it would kill us to be in an intimate relationship. <laughs> with, it would just spear us. <laughs> Make a society or keep them out of us. It's better. Yeah, you, you need to stick to your own kind. You you seriously, like I'm all about <laughs> with the person you love, but honestly in that situation, 
you need a six year old. That is just painful. Wow. That, that's um. There's a great. I think we've talked about it, Shanti. Have you seen that TikTok? We're being a little naughty now, but have you seen that TikTok <laughs> of that girl? She's probably in her early twenties, and she takes um a tape measure and she holds it up to her head, and she's like, "Why? Why, men? Why do you want to be this size? Like she's and it goes above her head. She's like, "Do you? Why? Why?" This is not going to work. <laughs> like, you know, like, because guys always want to say they're a certain size. It's like, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, exactly. She, and then she goes and she says, This, this is a little too small, but it's fine. <laughs> this right here, that's absolutely perfect. <laughs> You're only she goes on, she says, perfect. <laughs> and she says, She goes, She says, This, I'll see you in the next life. <laughs> 27 club i'll see you in the next life <laughs> men just walk yeah. around trying to talk about how big they are to each other meanwhile women are like dear god <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> oh, not what exactly. i see with, what, i hope i uh, when you drop your pants i hope that's not what i see because it's not going near me it's, it's a weapon of mass destruction at that point so <laughs> uh, 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 my mind goes with the giants i'm like when is there, I mean, is this what earthquakes are? Like, we've been told it's the plates moving underground, but are earthquakes like two giants getting it on? Is that what earthquakes are? Like, really? Well, they've been having wow. earthquakes in Cape Town here recently, so, and you know, there's also big, there's a, there's a, uh, well, not near Cape Town, but there's a big giant, uh, we've, you know, there's also giant remains and stuff in, uh, uh, in South Africa, yeah, definitely big time. Um, but not near Cape Town, so maybe uh, maybe that's what it is. It'd be an earthquake, so maybe next time there's an earthquake, we should all just play, put on loudspeaker, let's get it on, and just let them set the mood. Enjoy. Now, I mean, this is where another giant goes. baby on the way. I'm like, how do we not feel that because they're so huge? If you can hear your neighbor doing it, your little average size person neighbor doing it, because I hear my neighbor all the time. Um, <laughs> you can hear them doing it. <laughs> surely to God, you're going to hear a giant do it. Like, surely to God. Like, that's going to be noticeable. You're going to feel it as well. <laughs> oh, I wow. exactly how that big my neighbor's headboard is. Let's just put it that way. It's <laughs> My boyfriend and I will lay here sometimes and we'll, we'll turn the lights off for us to go to bed and all of a sudden we'll hear it. And we'll just both just start laughing because it's just ding, ding, ding. <laughs> just join them, man. Just join in the fact. What's wrong with you? You may as well just have a beautiful choir going on there as well. <laughs> contest. A little contest. Thank God I didn't have those issues. <laughs> oh, that's one of the downsides of living in a city is that you, you, Jessica used to live. Actually, Jessica, um, and if you guys have a little extra time, do you want to do like a little bonus? Um, we've talked about Black Eyed Kids before, haven't we, Shanti, on your channel? Yeah, we have. Mm. That's because experienced one. Do you have time to tell T Shanti your story? <sighs> yeah. yeah. Wow, sure. yeah. Yeah, there was a time where I lived in downtown Atlanta. And it's just right down the road from where Bryce lives now. Uh, it was a, an area called, uh, we call it the Potsy Highlands. And it's uh, it was right across from this really seedy club called the claremont lounge okay it was on the same road for a second you guys i i covered the claremont lounge one of my first videos i will don't Me laugh too. one of my first videos i'll tag it down in the description box below let me tell you something about the claremont lounge because if you come to atlanta georgia we, we will we will take shanti to the claremont lounge you gotta go there you gotta this go meet blondie you gotta go meet blondie this is where the atlanta liberties hang out and what do i mean by atlanta liberty and atlanta celebrity these are strippers who um, are probably my grand, well, my grandparents are no longer living, but they're not your typical yes. strippers, aren't they? Uh, they're, they're probably retired from a, <laughs> another strip club. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Oh I, my goodness, so you're looking like grab a granny there. You're looking at grab a granny. granny. And you've, got, you've got one that knows, is it Blondie that can crush a Coke can between her boobs? It's beer cans and it is with her boobs, yes. Yeah, and then one can stick sparklers yeah. in her boobs. Yes. Like, it's a whole They're thing, just, you guys. It was like Thailand. Right. They, these grandmas are getting it done in Thailand. That's what they do in Thailand. It was, <laughs> they're making money. You can't, you can't, money. you can't not the hustle. They're famous in Atlanta. People, I used to go there wow. all the time with friends. We wouldn't watch the show, but we'd go, they have karaoke night. Like it's a, it's a seedy, seedy, seedy lounge, but it's also a very famous lounge. You'll see celebrities in there all the time. 
Anyway, yeah. and it's it's under the Claremont Hotel, which they've just now revamped it. Did you see this, Jessica? They've revamped the Claremont. Yes. It used to be abandoned hotel and the lounge was underneath it, but now they've like made it an actual hotel again. It's like a boutique hotel. So good for them. But just to give you guys an idea, I know exactly where. And that's near like little five points um, where they say they have the city of hippies underneath the ground. Have you heard that legend, Jessica? Oh, man. I mean, I used to go to the underground club, like MJQ's right yeah, there, and there's a lot of yeah. stuff underground there. Yeah. And yeah. I used to walk to all those places. It was right on my street. But uh, the house, I lived in a house, and it was very haunted. Uh, and <clears throat> I've been talking to people lately about demonology and even the guy that was on my show last night, Lance Hightower was on my show and we were talking about uh, demonic entities and things and how to spot them. And uh, my, my house, I didn't know it at the time. I thought it was just haunted, but there was something very demonic going on in that home. And now, yes, we, I mentioned that it was so seedy I mentioned the area in the Claremont lounge beside it because it is a bar district and there's a lot of drinking, a lot of drugs going on. There's a lot of homelessness uh, around my house. I had homeless people living underneath my back porch actually. And, uh, and just, just a lot of, of a lot of activity. It's constantly active all night and all day and all the time. And, um, and so I would come home and like, there would be a sheet of fly and I say a blanket or a sheet of black flies on my ceiling at night going down the hallway from the outside i lived in the basement by the way the basement apartment there were two apartments down in this house and i had the one on the very far end so you'd go to the door and there was a, a glass like a window in the door and i i could see down the hall to my apartment door when i would go uh, to the door at night and uh and so i opened up the door and i, I heard a buzzing before i even got to the door and my, I had two friends with me because my friends would often come and, and crash on my couches and stuff at, um, at night because they didn't want to drive home because they had been drinking or whatever. And uh, but we had two different occasions. I came home and there were there was a buzzing sound. We looked in the window and there was a blanket of black flies. You couldn't see the ceiling because it was covered in black flies. OK, and so mm -hmm. I would open up the door and we would just duck and run to my door. We'd get in my apartment. It was fine. We shut the door, but we could hear buzzing all night. Uh, the next day, I'd wake up, and then the bugs would all be gone. There was not a trade. There'd be, like, one or two dead flies on the ground. But the flies would be gone. Uh, there were other times where, like, a, a mass of uh, just a black mass came out of my bedroom, and it floated. It was like an orb of black mass. I, I can't even ex describe it any other way. But it, it flew past me, and it knocked me down into my cabinets. And then it went past me into the closet, into my living room. Um there were like the the plumbing would it exploded one day and like it looked like blood was dripping down my ceiling in my bedroom. I mean, all sorts of weird stuff happened down there. But one night, okay, one night, I got a knock on my door. My doorbell rang, and I didn't have cameras down there at the time. It was before we had ring ring doorbells and stuff. It's been a long time since this happened. But I got a, a knock at my door, and so I figured it was just a friend needing to crash on my couch. Okay, they'd probably been drinking or something. And so I, I just figured it was a friend. And uh, and so I opened up the door, but I kind of, something held me back. So I kind of crept down just to see who it was. <clears throat> and I, I tiptoed down the hallway and I peeped out the window. It was kind of up high. And as I looked, there was a man standing there staring at my door. And he was he was dressed relatively nice. I looked at his eyes. His eyes were completely black. There was no white in his eyes whatsoever. It was just black eyes. And he was just standing there staring at my door. And uh, and so I just quietly crept backwards down the hall, ran in the apartment and locked the door. Okay. It was, but, but the feeling that I got was that man had no soul. He had no soul yeah. in his body. Um, I don't know what wow. he wanted. I didn't ask, you know, uh, but I'm, I'm assuming he eventually left. But uh, yeah, he was a black eyed person. They want to come in. They want it. They're like, they, they can't come in unless you invite them in. I, 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 I that's, I, and that's exactly how it is with anything in the, in the arcane. They always, it's like, even when you're looking at the poltergeist movies, you know, one of the things that there's like, hello, can I come in? And you've got to either invite them in or not. Like with everything, if you open that door, then it's, as we say in Afrikaans, this for bay, it's over. Yeah. 
It's um, wow. It's people, and it's interesting because with all the black eyed kid or black eyed people stories, people say they get that feeling before they get to the door, like that foreboding feeling, like you got to look out the window. Do it. Like yeah, something's not right, and that makes sense when you're young and you're in like your twenties and you're living in that area of Atlanta. That's a very young area of Atlanta. It's a lot of people are. It's a very like it's a bar scene. There's a lot of clubs. It's 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 for the young. That area of Atlanta is definitely for the young, and so it makes sense yeah. that your friends would just come by. But it's your friend. You're you know. You don't get that foreboding feeling. You can bring them in and put them on on your sofa and throw a pillow at them, a blanket, you know. But um, um, yeah, guys, that's I, I actually we did a show on Space Out Radio with Jessica a few months back over Black Eyed Kids because out of everything in this world that scares me the most is Black Eyed Kids. Yeah, Black Eyed Kids and feral people are the ones that scare they're me. F- they're F I M. I mean, when you speak to Caleb. Um, it's like the black eyed because a lot of the bodies are created by the alchemists. These alchemists Ooh. create the bodies from DNA and remains of whatever. So these bodies don't have souls right. or spirits. And then the Raphael uh, are waiting for a body. So, I mean, there's a whole trade in bodies and souls. That's often where you're going to find they'll kill animals and then these guys want to trade that body. And then. They trade the body and then they they integrate a body into the, let's say, the uh, sorry, one of these Raphael spirits, souls into the body of an animal. That's why you often like cats, stuff like that. Um, and obviously these these humans that they create, these, these uh, human beings that they create from nothing and then these black eyed, the Raphael take over that body. And they can live for a long time. They can live for a very long time. Oh my gosh. I've been talking about stuff like that, like with the artificial humans and the, the yes. homunculus. Okay, look up the homunculus. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are a lot, of, all, there are a lot of shows on that, actually. And, he, and Caleb was involved in that. So he is like, you're getting it firsthand knowledge there. And that's why this stuff is, I've learned stuff in the last year, especially, that is absolutely crazy. I mean, the Cassiopeians talk about the organic portals, and that's a human by being without a soul, you know, so that they can remote. They basically, in my mind, it's like a remote control human. So the fourth that yeah, make, would make sense. That's what they are. Can utilize the yeah. without souls. Um, it's fifty percent of the population, according to the Cassiopeians. And um, you know, Cassiopeians in one of their recent channelings talked about like they have these humans, humans that grew up underground and were trained for this time so there are a couple and the cassiopeian said there are a couple of really big youtubers in the truther community who are undergrounders they're not i I think i know who one is um they're not they were they were trained to come up and be on youtube and be a truther at this time to sway the disclosure yeah into into like people off the truth right you wake up and then they they lull you back to sleep again you oh know. man, I think there's one, at least one of those in the in the crypto community. It's probably I'm more. Sure. Yeah. I'm oh, sure. for sure. Yeah. I'm sure in the crypto community there'll be quite a few. Yes. <laughs> I think there's quite a few all over actually. All over, wow. all over. Yeah, they have it every single every single area facet. I'm sure there's preachers and priests and rabbis and you know monks out there that Crazy. are placed in their positions. It's everywhere. It's politicians. You know, it's, 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 it, this is a wicked, wicked, not, well, it's not, as the Cassiopeians also say in the law of one also says, because we're on a polarized planet, as much darkness as there is, there's equally that much light. Early. You know? Early. So, and now as, as the Cassiopeians say, now we're on an even playing field. So now yeah. it's, it's the, the light has, has just as much power as the dark now. And that's why we're seeing so much fall apart and so many people starting to like figure out something's going on because there's an even playing field now between both for a while the dark the darkness was dominating you know so um yeah and they um uh, the cassiopeians go far as to say that our our bodies in this density are already geared towards fourth density negative and that's why human beings crave like meat when if we're going service to self it's like you have that inner friction because it was our DNA was messed with to try to get us to instinctually go and they, it's interesting guys I totally 
I mean, I could talk to you guys about this all day because I find it so fascinating. And again, the law of one, you guys, and the Cassiopeian board, they do a really good job of explaining this in a very scientific way. So it's very, you can, you can integrate it into a lot of different religions because it's just very scientific about the polarization. But yeah, y'all, I mean, one of my, I, I, you know, a lot of people think right now that this is all a movie we're watching and that the good guys are in control and it's all part of the script. And I'm like, no, my friends. That is a, that is controlled opposition. That is a Trojan horse, my friends. Um, how clever, how clever of them, how clever of these underground people on YouTube to tell you, don't worry, don't worry, the good guys are in control. You can relax. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, it's not real. The Wait for it's coming, it's fine. You don't have to do That's anything it. to make change. <laughs> one, of, one of these, one of these people on the on the YouTube that I think is an underground person. A few years ago, when I started to wake up to her, she said that child um, carpooling. Because we're on YouTube, I'll say child carpooling. You guys know what I mean. That it doesn't exist mm -hmm. anymore. It's been totally, totally stopped. And I was like, "That's not right." The biggest industry in the world. The billion mm -hmm. dollar industry it isn't stopped it's still going on i wish it had stopped but we have to be realistic and that's when i realized exactly. i started to realize this person was not who she said she was so anyway exactly. like, we're over an hour now is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we close out today man you know yeah, I just a fab show. thank you it's been wonderful really enjoyed i look forward to seeing you uh, next week jessica Gonna be fun. You. When is Jessica going to be on? I was going to Shanti. When will Jessica be on your show? Tuesday? Is it Tuesday? It's Tuesday. Yeah, I think it's Tuesday. I'm pretty sure. It's April yeah. 2nd, right? Yeah. And, uh, we're on the is, I have to look at my calendar, too. Yes, Tuesday at 6 p.m. my time. So I think it's 12 o'clock Atlanta time. Yes. Because I think I'm six hours ahead of you. It's 12.34 right now. What time is it for you right now, Shanti? 6.34. Yeah. So, yeah. So six noon. So Tuesday at noon East Coast time, guys, New York City time, Atlanta time, noon, um, Jessica will be on Aquarius Rising Africa. I'm going to be in the comment section, guys. I cannot wait to see You're going to be moderating I'll be, and I'll whacking the trolls. trolls. I'll be whacking some trolls. So. <laughs> All the cryptids, the naughty cryptids. All the naughty cryptids. I'll be a <laughs> so, oh, yeah. oh, man. I can't oh, wait. Lovely. You know, Jessica. That's going to be awesome. It's gonna be we're talking about Yeah, it's gonna be online. fun. We're gonna have a great we're gonna have a great chat, so I look forward to that. Using the Me chat too. use of the chat during a show is awesome. Like I will say, because we share a lot of the same audience members, and I know we talk a lot about yeah. the trolls, but ninety nine point nine percent of the people who participate in our in our platforms are fucking incredible. Like we have got some yeah. really awesome and Yeah, we do. We have Shanti, when we have covered like Rasputin and his magical wiener, like we have we had some of the funniest people <laughs> in the comments. He's pickle wiener. Pickle, he's pickle wiener. We should get our friend Angie the the, the pickled chickles. You don't know, look at it. We had a pickle, a pickle, a pickle, a pepper, a, a Peter. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Uh, we, have, we do have we do have pickled sausages. It's it's a. <laughs> we, we have pickles. <laughs> I mean, I'm pickles. <laughs> Uh, you know, we'll to, when we get off, I'm going to pull that picture up and show you this. That you will never look yes. at the towel. Oh, I'm good. I don't want to see it. It doesn't even look human. It doesn't like listen. Not to brag or anything, but I've I've seen quite a few in my day. Not to brag or anything. <laughs> <laughs> that was nothing. That was nothing like it. I've never seen before. <laughs> Boyfriends watching right now, yours was fine. It was fine. <laughs> Got nothing to worry. About. Hilarious. Oh, <laughs> Russ. Oh, so, man. That was quite. That was quite. I mean, if you showed little girls that when they were like in the sixth grade, they would never want to touch a boy ever. So you would have any. Yeah. any <laughs> Any unwanted any teen pregnancies, it would it would be fine. It would take care of itself. So abstinence. <laughs> you showed them that. So anyway, well, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see you guys on Aquarius Rising Africa once again, guys. Go and make sure you check out Jessica's live show from last night again. All those links will be down in the description box below. It's right underneath the video. That's a comment I get a lot, you guys. I cannot come to your house 
and click the link for you. You just have to look right under the video. There's going to be a description box. It's always there on every video. If you don't see everything, you have to hit the, have to hit, you have to hit the show more button or the down arrow. You have to hit it. Right. You see everything. The top part of the description box is always the sponsors because they're what keep the lights on. And then you'll see show notes. And under show notes, every single link that I mention in this video, whether it's somebody else's channel, whether it's a past episode, it's always under show notes. And you just click right. it and it takes you right to their channel or right to whatever, wherever it is you're trying to get to. So, I, again, I can't come to your house and do it for you. You just, I get that a lot. I get that a lot. If you're still confused, I don't mean to sound rude, because I have to do this too. If you're still confused, just ask your kid to help you. Just go and get <laughs> Yeah. Ask Kids will generally know how. <laughs> if you don't have a kid, just call your friend's kid, call your grandkid. They'll come over and show you how to do it, because I, I can't. There's nothing I can do, right? It's your computer. So, um, all right, you ladies. Well, I hope you guys are having a wonderful start of your weekend. Happy Easter for those Ishtar. Happy Ishtar for those who are celebrating. I, again, will not be on with Shanti on Monday because it's a holiday. I'll, I, got, I, I just realized... I, Monday is going to be out for me, but I will be back on with Shanti on Wednesday again for us to start talking about the Lori Vallow case. Looking forward to that. Yeah, we've just done the Jody Hildebrandt, Ruby Frankie. So interesting going over the next one. Yeah, looking forward to that. Absolutely. So for, if you guys want to prep and research that case before we talk about it Wednesday for yourself, I, I as always love to hear other people's in the comment section to see or the, the chat to see what other people are saying too, because it's a group discussion. So, all right, you guys, well, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday weekend and we will all talk to you very soon. Bye everybody. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>